Hello everyone, Daz here, and in this video we're going to take a look at the fundamentals of animation using Slider Revolution. Here I have the cinematic slider template open in the module editor. If I click the blue preview button, you can see we have quite a few different animations going on. We also have three different slides, with each having their own set of unique animated content. To see how these animations are configured, go to the Layer Options tab. On the left of the tab you'll see we're currently in the editor view. Select animation from the options below to switch to animation view. You'll see a blank panel with the message add or select layers. That's because we don't have anything selected yet. If I select a layer, a number of panels will be displayed. The keyframes panel, basics panel and advanced panels provide options for controlling your animations. If you're making a change to an animation layer, you'll more than likely be making that change via one of these three panels. We'll cover many of these options in this video as we go. First up though, let's talk about how to preview animations. We've already seen how you can preview your entire site design by clicking the large blue preview button in the bottom right corner of the module editor. You can also preview your current slide by clicking the triangle button located at the top right corner above your stack of layers. While previewing, you'll see a purple vertical line moving from left to right along the timeline. This is called the playhead. The purple flag at the top of the playhead displays a time signature that updates as it plays. The playhead will stop when it reaches the end of the timeline. You can also stop it manually while the animation is running by pressing the square stop button that appears after you've pressed the triangular play button. The shortcut for this is to press the space bar on your keyboard. Pressing space a second time will stop the playback. Click anywhere in the timeline to place the playhead there. To manually move the playhead, click and hold your mouse button on the flag and then move the playhead forward or backward. This is called scrubbing. Once you've finished scrubbing the timeline, just release your mouse button wherever you want to place the playhead. If you want to preview an individual layer rather than the whole slide, select the layer you want to preview, then go to the Layer Options tab. In the Animation subsection, you'll see another triangular play button to the right of the keyframes panel title. Click it to preview the layer you have selected. Think of an animation as being a piece of content that changes from a certain state to a certain state. The layer we are currently previewing shows us an animation that is changing from a small size to a large size. This is why we refer to the start of an animation as its from state and the end of an animation as its to state. To create an animation in Slider Revolution, all you have to do is define or allocate a from and a to state to your content. Slider Revolution will automatically animate the change between those two states. Let's create a simple animation to see how this works in practice. We'll use a new module, so let's back out of this one. Click New Blank Module, then click Quick Guide. First, let's change our background to black. Click the folder icon on the Slide BG Animation layer to go to the Background subsection of the Slide Options tab. In the Source panel, click the Type option and select Coloured from the drop-down menu. Click the BG Colour option field and select Black from the default colour palette. If I preview a new slide, you'll see a brief transparent fade in. If I click animation, you can see fade in is highlighted blue. This is the default animation used by Slider Revolution because it offers a nice basic effect when transitioning between multiple slides. You can leave it set to fade in if you want, but for the purpose of this video tutorial, I want to start a custom animation from a blank slate. So let's turn off the default transition. Do that by selecting no transition. Now if I click preview, the default fade in no longer happens. Next, we need a new layer for our custom animation. In the top toolbar, hover over add layer, then hover over text. To make this fast, we'll choose quick style headline. We have another video tutorial on our YouTube channel and in the Slider Revolution manual for how to use quick styles if this is new to you. Select a quick style headline and the text on our new layer will be updated with that style. Close the quick style headline panel, then in the content subsection of the layer options tab, change the text layer to read something a little more fitting. I'll go with animate. Reposition the new text wherever you'd like it. Go to the animation subsection. Here we have the keyframes basics and advanced panels that we saw earlier. 
The Anim From and Anim To buttons you see in the keyframes panel here are where you can configure the From and To states of your animations. Before we do that though, let's go over what the In and Out buttons here represent. The options available under the In button apply to the very first animation on a layer, which we refer to as the In animation. The options available under the Out button relate to the Out animation, which you can probably guess refers to the last animation on a layer. Animations on a layer are represented by an animation strip. These grey bars you see on a layer's timeline, which are highlighted blue when you hover over them or select them, are animation strips. So, the options available under the In drop-down list apply to the first animation strip on a layer, and the Out buttons options apply to the last animation strip on a layer. All layers have an In animation strip and an Out animation strip by default, just as you can see in our new text layer. Our text layer's In animation strip currently has the number 300 on it. Numbers on animation strips tell you how long the animation is set to go for in milliseconds. 1000 means 1 second, 2000 means 2 seconds, and so on. A value of 300 means our in animation is set to go for 300 milliseconds, or 0.3 of a second. If I hold my mouse cursor over the right edge of the in animation strip, you'll see its appearance changes to a line with two white arrows either side of it. If you place the edge of the animation strip in the middle of those arrows and hold left click on your mouse, you can drag the strip to change its duration. Let's change it to 2000 to make it 2 seconds long. Clicking on the left side of the in animation strip is the same as clicking the anim from button, which displays a bunch of options in the sidebar for modifying the anim from state of your animation. Clicking the right side of the in animation strip is the same as clicking the anim to button that's positioned to the right of the in button. This displays the various options available for configuring the anim2 state of the first animation strip in our layer. Think of anim from as referring to the start of the animation strip, and anim2 as referring to the end of the animation strip. If we go back to our timeline, notice the second default animation strip, which is also set to last for 300 milliseconds, is located at the very end of our layer. Just as the first animation strip on a layer is always the in animation, the last animation strip on a layer is always the out animation. Click the out animation strip in the timeline or the anim2 button next to the out drop down list and you'll see a bunch of options in the sidebar for configuring the anim2 state of the out animation. Notice unlike the in animation line, the out animation has no anim from button to select. That's because the only strip that ever needs a from state is the first one. Slider Revolution automatically sets the from state for every subsequent animation strip in a layer based on the to state of the previous animation strip. Or to put that simply, the end state of an animation strip automatically becomes the starting state of the next one. We'll see how this works in practice later in the video. Click the out button and you'll see a drop down list. This list contains various categorized pre-made or preset animations that you can use to instantly animate your layer content. Expand any of the categories to see the animations that are available. Hover your cursor over any of them and you'll get a preview. If we click the In button, you'll see the same thing. By default, In animations are set to Fade In, which is a preset animation you'll find under Simple Transitions. If I click the Keyframes Play button to preview our currently selected layer, you can see the default Fade In is applied to our newly added text. To choose a different preset, simply select one from the list. If I pick the Let Us Fly In from the left preset, for example, now when I click Preview, you can see our text is animated with Let Us Flying In from the left. It's that easy to apply animation presets. We're going to continue with creating our own animation from scratch, so let's start from a blank slate with no animation presets. To do that, click the In button, then under the Simple Transitions option, select No Animation. Doing so will also reset our animation strip to its default 300 length. So I'm just going to drag it back to 2000 to make the animation we're about to create last for 2 seconds. With our new text layer selected, click either the left side of the animation strip or the anim from button. Now that anim from is selected, the changes we make to the options in the sidebar will apply to the starting state of our animation. For example, if I change the Y axis vertical position of our text to 200 pixels, you'll see our text position for the anim from state change on the canvas. The white dotted box there shows us the original position of our text layer on the canvas. This is called the anchor point. If ever you reset all of your from and to animation values, the anchor point is where everything will reset to. So just remember, 
the white dotted box is your anchor point. If you want to change the anchor point, under the Layer Options tab, click Size and Position. The X value and Y value shown here are our current anchor points, shown as PX for pixels. Changing these values will change your anchor point. But I'm happy with the position of our text to start with, so let's go back to our animation. Notice that the Anim2 state is selected. Notice also that the position of our text on the canvas for the Anim2 state matches our anchor point. That's because we haven't made any changes to the Anim2 state yet. If I click the keyframes play button now, you'll see our text moves from the Anim from point we set a moment ago to the Anim2 point, which is currently the same as our anchor point. So let's change that. Make sure the Anim2 button to the right of the In button is selected. Now click and hold your mouse button on the text on the canvas. Then move the text to where you'd like the animation to end. You'll see another purple box and a flag identifying that you're changing the Anim2 state of your animation. Below that, you'll see the X and Y coordinates update in real time as you move your selection around the canvas. You'll also see those coordinates update in the advanced panel in the sidebar. Release your mouse button where you want to place your text. If we now preview that, you'll see slider revolution automatically handles the transition between our Anim from and Anim2 states. I'd actually prefer the animation to flow from the left where our anchor point currently is to the right, so let's change our anim from point again. Click on anim from, and this time instead of dragging the text manually, I'll update the y coordinate of our anim from text from 200 back to 0. Be aware that the x and y coordinates for both the anim from and anim2 states work relative to our anchor point. When you change a value in the x or y fields for your anim from or anim2 states, you're telling Slider Revolution to change the position of your animation along the X and Y axes relative to your anchor point. A zero in the X field and a zero in the Y field for the Anim From state tells Slider Revolution to place our Anim From position at the same location as our anchor point. To illustrate this further, if I go to Size and Position again, and this time change the anchor point for our Y axis to say 300, you'll see our entire animation moves as a result. So as you can see, it is very easy to modify the position of an animation on the canvas. You don't have to modify the anim from and anim2 states each time you want to move your animation to a different position on the canvas. You can just change the anchor point. Click undo to change our anchor point back to where it was. Okay, let's spruce up our animation by changing the color of the text as it animates. Go back to the animation subsection. For our starting color, click anim from, then in the advanced panel, click color. Switch the text radio button to on, then select a color. To make it quick, I'm going to choose the yellow preset. For our ending color, click the Anim2 button and do the same thing. This time we'll go with a blue preset. Click preview and you'll see Slider Revolution automatically handles the color transition from yellow to blue. Maybe we also want our text to go from small to large. Click Anim From, then in the Advanced panel, click Layer. Locate the Layer Scaling field, which is denoted with a capital T in a box. We'll make our starting text small. 1 is the default for 100%. Let's go down to 0.7 to make it 70% of its original size. You'll need to type 0.7 into both T fields to cover both horizontal and vertical scaling. You can see the Anim From text layer has now scaled down on the canvas. Let's repeat the process for our Anim2 state, only this time we'll set our scaling to 1.5 to scale it up to 150%. Click the keyframes play button to preview, and we can see Slider Revolution automatically handling a smooth transition between the two states we've set. If you want to slow the animation down or speed it up, all you have to do is adjust the length of the animation strip. The left edge of an animation strip shows where the animation begins. The right edge shows where in the timeline the animation ends. When the cursor changes to a double-sided arrow, you're good to resize the strip by dragging the edge left or right. A longer strip will extend the duration of the animation, and as you can see, moving the right edge also changes the point at which the animation ends in the timeline. A shorter strip will shrink the duration of the animation, that is, it'll speed it up. Moving the left edge also modifies the point in the timeline where the animation begins. If you want to move the entire animation without changing its duration in any way, just click and hold anywhere inside the animation strip, then drag and drop the animation wherever you like along the timeline. You can
can also add more than one animation strip to a single layer. In the keyframes panel, hover your mouse over the Anim2 button. If you have multiple animations here, you would hover over the Anim2 button of the animation you want your new animation to appear after in the timeline. You'll see a plus symbol appear in the lower right corner. Click on it. A new two animation keyframe line will be inserted in between the in and out lines. It will be highlighted blue, indicating that it was automatically selected upon being added, and it will have the default keyframe hash text on it to identify it. You can also see a corresponding animation strip has been added into our layer on the timeline, set to a duration of 400 milliseconds. Let's move it further into the timeline and drag it out so that its duration is 2 seconds. Note that no matter which side of the new animation strip you click on, it will always select the whole thing. That's because additional animation strips don't require you to set from settings. All additional animations have their from states automatically set by slider revolution based on the ending state of the previous animation strip in that layer. In this example, the ending or to state of the previous animation is large blue text, and so the starting point of our new animation is also large blue text. All you have to remember is only the very first animation strip in a layer needs a from state, and that's why the first animation strip is the only one that you can click on the left and right side of the strip separately. To see how this works in practice, select the second animation strip and change its color like we did earlier. We'll go with purple this time. Preview that using the play button to the left of the timeline. You can see our animation moves from yellow to blue, and then from blue to purple. If I scrub the timeline and hold the playhead over the start of our newly added animation strip, you can see that it's blue, exactly the same as the to state or end of the previous animation strip. All we had to do was tell Slider Revolution that we wanted the to state of our second animation strip to be purple and Slider handled the rest for us. It is also a good idea to name each animation strip you add with something meaningful to make it easy to identify it later. To do that, with your animation selected, go to the Basics panel and look for the Frame Alias field. Right now it has Keyframe Hash written in it, let's rename that to Purple. You'll see the label of the two animation we added in the Keyframes panel now reads Purple, making it easy to identify as the animation where our text turns purple. This becomes more helpful the more animations you add. To add a new animation after the one we just added, hover your mouse over the two animation strip that we renamed to purple, and again click the plus button that appears there. You can do that for as many additional animation strips as you like. To delete an animation strip, select it in the keyframes panel and then click the trash can icon in the bottom right of the keyframes panel. Just be aware that a layer must always have an in and out animation strip, so you can't delete those lines even if you don't plan on using them for actual animations. Okay, we looked at the frame alias field a moment ago, which is in the basics panel. There are a couple of other options here for us to look at. You can use the duration field to set the duration of an animation without having to drag the animation strip manually. If I want to speed up our blue to purple transition, I can change this from 2 seconds to 1.5 seconds by typing 1500. You can see the length of the animation strip in our layer track has now shortened to correspond with this change. The start point of the animation won't be affected though. If you want to change where the animation begins in the timeline, under the duration field we have the start field. The start field determines when the animation transition will begin. If I want our animation to start at the 4 second mark, instead of trying to reposition the animation strip manually by dragging it, I can instead type 4000 into the start field. You can see the left edge of our purple animation strip has been moved to the 4 second mark in the timeline. And again, you can drag it to any point in the timeline you want. The easing field offers drop down selections for changing the motion acceleration of your animations, but in this video we're looking at basic animation only, so we'll leave the subject of how easing affects animation transitions for a more advanced tutorial, as we will the wait for action button below that. Instead, let's go back to our timeline and specifically the out animation strip, which as we've learned is always the final animation strip in a layer. A wait flag next to your out animation strip tells you your out animation is pinned to the end of your timeline. What that means is, your out animation won't start playing until the full duration of your slide is over. The duration of a slide is marked by a dark grey flag at the end of the timeline. In our case, our slide duration can be seen there as being set to 9 seconds. 
In most cases, if you click and hold your mouse button on the out animation, you can drag and drop it anywhere within your timeline that you'd like the out animation to start. Doing so will remove the weight flag automatically. If you find you can't drag your out animation, it likely means your out animation is locked behind the weight flag. In this case, go to your layer's track name and look to the right. There you'll see a right arrow just before the timeline. If you click on that right arrow while no weight flag is present, your out animation will be returned to the end of the timeline and the weight flag will be present again. If you click on it while the weight flag is present, the weight flag will be toggled off, enabling you to drag your out animation anywhere you like. Alternatively, in the basics panel, just type into the start field where you'd like your out animation to begin. If the out animation is selected, you'll see in the keyframes panel, the out anim2 button will be blue. You can also click the out drop down list in the keyframes panel to select a preset animation. You can extend the duration of the out animation by dragging it or by using the duration field in the basics panel. Let's set it to 1.5 seconds. Basically, you can modify just about anything with the out animation that you can do with any other animation strip. However, if you try to drag the out animation as far right as possible, you'll see that it will only go as far as the end of the timeline and no further, as signified by the dark grey flag with a 9 in it. This is the end of the timeline because it is the maximum duration of this particular slide. If we go to the slide options tab and click progress, you can see in the progress panel our slide length is set to default. That means our slide will last for the default duration of all slides in our module, which are all set to 9 seconds. To change the default duration of slides in your module, go to the Module General Options tab and then Defaults. Under the Defaults Basics panel, the Slide Duration field shows us the default time set for how long slides in our module go for, which shows us 9000 milliseconds, or 9 seconds. You can change that here if you want to change the duration on all slides in your module, or you can go back to the Slide Options tab, click Progress, and change it for each individual slide here. In the slide length field, just type in milliseconds how long you'd like your slide to last for. For example, if we want our current slide to last for 7 seconds, type 7000. Now you can see on our timeline, our out animation is set to start at the 7 second mark. But the wait flag is still present, meaning our out animation will still only start playing after the slide duration of 7 seconds has run its course. What this means in practice is, our out animation will play at the same time as our slide transitions to the next slide. In other words, our out animation and our slide transition animation will both overlap. To illustrate this, let's quickly create a second slide. For that, let's take the easy path and just duplicate the one we already have. Hover over slides, then next to our current slide, click the duplicate slide icon. Our new duplicate slide is automatically selected. To make it stand out from our first slide a little better, Let's quickly change the background colour so we'll know exactly which slide we're looking at. So our first slide has a black background, and our second slide's background is mahogany. And of course, you can also modify the animation itself that transitions each slide to the other. Click Animation. Under the Transition Presets panel, simply pick any transition that you'd like for how your current slide will transition. Let's just go with a simple fade in for now and we'll do the same for our other slide. If I click the preview button in the bottom right of the module editor, watch and notice that our out animation overlaps the transition to the next slide. This out animation system working in tandem with slide transitions can be used to create some really great and unique animation effects. But what if we want our animation to finish before the slide transitions? To do that, select the out animation, then specify the start time in the basics panel. Let's go with the five and a half second mark. And of course we need to do the same thing with our other slide. Now if I click preview, you'll see our out animation completes before each slide transitions to the other. You can of course change and tweak settings on any preset you choose and save those as custom transitions too for later use, but we'll leave that for another video. For now, that's about everything you need to know to hit the ground running with making your own basic animations from scratch. Thanks for watching and enjoy using Slider Revolution. Start your Slider Revolution 6 experience now. The world's most powerful WordPress builder.